gather this day in a spirit of welcome for all. We begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus summoned the apostles to a place of rest. He summoned them not to an oasis for physical refreshment. He called them to a deserted place where they would rest in the spiritual refreshment of deepened conversion to his ways. As we enter the spirit of this celebration, let us ask mercy for the times we have turned away from the Lord by withholding mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to heal us and to make us one. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you came that we might find fullness of life in you. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We praise our God in song. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, 
and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Microphone. Catherine, Catherine, could you check the microphone switch, please? No, by, by, the, by the end of it, on the top. Thank you. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with his commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A uh, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. In baptism, we are anointed, as Christ was anointed, priest, prophet, and king. Priest, that by our choices we would bear witness to holiness of life and the sanctification of others according to ways in which we are called. For many people, as a spouse, a parent, a godparent, a sponsor, 
helping others grow in the life of holiness. Profit. That by our actions, we would teach the values we find in the Gospels, advocating justice for the oppressed and peace for the troubled. King. That by our care, we would be like shepherds, concerned with the safety and flourishing of the flock, leading. We really can't get away from the shepherd imagery today. It's, it's in Jeremiah the prophet, it's in the psalm, it's in the gospel according to Mark. It may seem less than affirming when Jesus refers to his followers and to us as sheep. But the real point that he is committed to us, as is a shepherd to the sheep. He is the shepherd who cares for us and who appoints us to the task of shepherding others as well. Caring for all the earth and all of creation whose life it supports. Care for the earth, our common home, is sometimes dismissed as a rather lightweight topic, hardly worthy of a religious person's attention. But it is as important as life itself. God's earth is the only place we have to live. Without it, we die, or somebody does. We cannot take comfort saying that, well, I live at 4,000 feet, so what if the coastlands are swallowed up by the sea? Especially since that same climate change which brings this also brings increased fires close to home. And if shepherding the earth has insufficient appeal how about shepherding people? Beginning with responsibility for our choices, our speech, our attitudes, and our relationships. All these affect other people. They either build up goodwill or they tear it down. Good or evil, we tend to find what we're looking for and reap what we sow. We are to be good shepherds in the image of Jesus, the good shepherd. Hear the message of Jeremiah the prophet this day. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Such false shepherds may at vulnerable times appeal to the darker elements of humanity satisfying inclinations towards violence, even hatred. But how are we to know the good shepherd from the false shepherd? As Paul taught the Ephesians, Christ, the model of every good shepherd, is our peace, who broke down the dividing wall of enmity preaching peace to all who were far off and peace to all those who were near. It is the false shepherd who scapegoats others to provide simple answers, winning personal acclaim and relief of the responsibility of looking into and searching one's own soul. Whether you and I are good shepherds or false shepherds, or some sporadic mix of the two, we all have something in common. It is our need 
for deepened conversion to Christ. Be we good shepherds or false shepherds, none of us is the perfect shepherd. That would be Jesus Christ, before whom we will all one day bow down, asking mercy. Until then, creatures of land and sea and air ask for mercy. God's people, all God's people, from those soon to be born into this world to those soon to be depart from it, ask mercy. All who suffer needlessly or bear indignity, ask mercy. And this mercy is asked of us who have the means to address the injustices at the root. This mercy is asked of us who will one day ask mercy for the times that we have withheld mercy from others, either by our choice or by our blindness. Together we profess our belief. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit were born of the Virgin Mary and came in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our hope in you. We pray for the church. May all who are baptized in Christ gather God's people, shepherding them rightly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the world. May there be peace, both of respect for human rights and dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and all who call it home. May we learn from our past as we look forward to all we can become. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish. May we be drawn to deepened conversion in Christ for the sake of the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who go without a world of abundance. May there be food for those who hunger and healing for all those who ail, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for first responders and all served by them in these weeks of extreme heat. 
May they be renewed and sustained. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray on thanksgiving for our blessings as we ask the grace of humility. May we give as a gift what we have received as a gift. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick. May all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit have certain knowledge of God's healing love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died, in particular Dick friends, as well as all who have died suddenly in natural disasters and other tragedies. May they rest in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of Lacey Fleming, for whom our Mass is offered. As we also pray for all the hopes and dreams we bring to this time, may all our aspirations give glory to God by serving the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our hope in you who live and reign forever and ever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion various offerings of the law, Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty, our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. He became neighbor to the oppressed and afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are holy indeed, O Lord, and to be glorified, who, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the first disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ which has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, bring your church to perfect faith and perfect charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, and all the lay faithful, the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to freedom and truth. May your church stand as a living witness to justice and peace that all people may be raised up to a new hope. And remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. All the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. To us also, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, May we come to an eternal dwelling, living with you forever, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look then not on our sins, but rather on our faith as your church, and grant us your peace and unity in accord with your will as you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be.
those participating in the liturgy from home, please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continued thanks to our parishioners who arrange and coordinate live streaming and recording of our Mass for the benefit of all who take care of themselves at home, and thanks to all of them for tuning in so faithfully. Uh, weekly harvesting in the Jubilee Garden for the benefit of Helena Food Share continues this weekend. Sunday is at 11.30 until 1, and during the week on Tuesday afternoons from 5.30 to 6.30. All are welcome, no experience is needed, and thanks to all who continue to bring plastic containers for berries and other small crops. They are always needed. Please keep in your prayers all who have applied for the position of Director of Liturgy and Music in our parish, as well as all who are considering applying. And we are in need of a communion minister for the hospital to serve every other Wednesday along with our current hospital minister. And we are also in need of substitute communion ministers at word and communion services at the various care and residential centers in our parish. All training is provided and Virtus Safe Environment training is needed for both. Our youth group, once again, has raffle tickets available for a pig, or at least half a pig. There'll be two drawings. And this is a fundraiser to help fund their participation in November at the National Catholic Youth Conference in Indianapolis. The winning ticket will be drawn on, at the parish picnic on August 22nd at Spring Meadow. And, as you know, we are presently investigating some leakage with the baptism font. It's going to take a long time, and it's going to be a big process. So I, I thank you for your, your patience and, and your goodness with that. The annual parish report is now completed, and it's available in the gathering space. And included as an insert in that is my letter to you that I have in every bulletin. And of course, the bulletin is available on our parish website, and many of you read that letter there. I don't expect that everyone's going to do that. So if you take a copy of the parish report, which is a comprehensive <coughs> consideration of our total life as a parish, our prayer, our ministry, our sacrifice. But it does have an insert, which has to do with COVID and our response to it. And I do hope you read it. I do. The Lord be with you. 
And may Almighty God bless you and bless us all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks.